Hello, and welcome to the 8th Annual Wild Wisconsin Winter Web Conference. I am Jean Anderson with the South Central Library System, and I am moderating this closing session this afternoon. And assisting me today, we have Leah Langby with the IFLIS Library System and Ann Hamlin from Wisconsin Valley Library Service. We are so glad that you, to have you here. Our presenter for this closing session is Amy Rauman, teacher and trainer for the North Central Technical College. Amy will be presenting, Take a Break from Your Smartphone. So Amy, go ahead and take it away whenever you're ready. Thank you and welcome everyone. It sounds like this is the tail end of your sessions and so I'm hoping you have plenty of energy. Take a deep breath um, if you just need to get some oxygen to your brain so you can enjoy the last uh, hour that we have here together. This is Take a Break from Your Smartphone, and I am excited and looking forward to sharing the information that I have learned. Um, I'm learning right along with you. And so here we go, is we're gonna just start moving along with letting you know where this actually stemmed from. We're basing this off of the book, How to Break Up with Your Phone by Katherine Price. And you know, when we thought about the title, how to break up with your phone sounds a little intimidating, almost like we have to get rid of them and be absent from them and not use them anymore. So I want to encourage you, this is not about being phoneless. This is about using our phones less than maybe we are at the present. So stay encouraged that this is just about taking a break from your phone now and again to just reevaluate why are we using our phones in the ways that we are. Please know that as we go through the presentation, I may use the word smartphone, I might say cell phone, I might say phone interchangeably. It's all pertaining to the smartphone is, is my goal with that. There'll be a couple of times also that I may encourage your online participation, just as was asked in the introduction part of hearing some of your input and insight for maybe two different parts as we go along in the presentation. So feel free to participate, but do not feel obligated. Um, we're just trying to get some feedback, uh, but we won't be tying any of your names to the feedback that may be shared. All right, there's basically two objectives to this workshop. The first half will talk about the wake up, just waking us up as to why we're using our cell phone, our smartphones and the impact they are having on our lives, and then considering the breakup. Why do we need to take breaks from our phones? What would be the benefit to us? And most importantly, how do we go about taking some breaks for our phones? Maybe some ways we've never even considered before. The purpose behind the breakup. I hope that we can learn that we can keep what we love and get rid of what we really don't like. There's some, I'm gonna say maybe some apps that we have by habit, or maybe they already came with our phone or we heard about it from someone else. So we've added maybe a lot of apps, but we're not even really necessarily using them or we're using them without even thinking much about it. So let's keep what we love and just weed out some of the, the apps that we do not maybe love or use that much. We wanna create an awareness of what we are doing is just understand why are we doing what we're doing? Sometimes we need our phones for certain reasons, or we just really want them for certain reasons, but we're just not really aware of what those are. So this really is about an awareness. We want to have a relationship with our smartphone that really could be considered happy, where we are the ones in control and not our phones, the ones in control of us. Remember, our smartphones are devices. They don't have brains or feelings, though that would be obvious. We need to really remember that. They don't have brains or feelings. So we need to make sure that we are the ones in control and not letting them control us. So ultimately it just comes down to taking some breaks and finding balance in our lives. I thought it might be fun just for a quick minute to consider the evolution of phones. And depending on all of our ages, some of us have seen, even in the picture on the bottom right, how phones have evolved over the years. Um, some of us maybe only have seen the, the last maybe 10 or 15 years or so. Um, but in 1973, the first mobile phone call was actually made. And it was called the Simon Personal Communicator. It was created by IBM about 15 years before Apple actually released 
the iPhone. So just to look at some of these statistics or just the, the dates on here is the cell phones and, and iPhones, it's really relatively new technology. And they've made such strides over the last several years, actually the last few years, so much advancement has been made that we think that they've been around even longer than they have. But smartphones themselves have really only existed since the, the mid to earlier 1990s, about 1992 or so. Then in 2007, the summer of 2007 is when the first iPhone was released. And maybe for some of you, you can just think back when did you receive your first iPhone or smartphone, whatever it might have been, is for all of us that may have been at different ages and stages, but when did you maybe get your first iPhone? Fun to think about how many years you've maybe had them. And then in 2012 is when the smartphones actually became popular. So if you think about that, that's only just over about seven years when smartphones have really become the hit for a majority of us. What do we use our phones for? Boy, so many things. Uh, they really almost are our lifeline. And I've listed about 15 different items up here that you can relate to, I'm sure. So just look at the list for a minute. And as you look at it, I want you to think, and this is where I would invite your participation, is maybe send a, a note to Jean and let her know, where do you spend the most time on your phone? And uh, again, no names will be attached to it, but maybe we can get a feel for what are we using them for? Is it mostly for social media? Um, maybe we're a group that's watching the news a lot or we like listening to music. Um, a lot of college students I can say when statistics come in is they really use their phones as their watch and their uh, clock to know what time things are and um, have alarms set for when they need to be at different places. So feel free to submit your thoughts as to where do you spend a majority of your time based on the items that are here on, on the screen, or if there's something that's not listed, you can share that as well. So I'll just give you a, a last couple of seconds here to All look right. at that. You ready, ready for some of the answers? We've got a yeah. lot. So far. Um, oh, great. <laughs> we have a lot. Social media and games, a lot okay. of texting, yeah. uh, maps, um podcasts hmm. uh someone even says talking on the phone yay um, so the, using it as a phone um camera uh music uh, hmm. alarm clock yeah social media audiobooks uh hmm. email internet usage um let's see there was a oh. Uh, checking email when traveling, texting for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, yeah. One comment was mostly for the internet, what's a phone? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yes, personal online classes, lots of games and lots of social media, YouTube, Pokemon Go, um, a few say phone calls and more say reading sure. audiobooks. Yeah, a variety. Wow. Think of all the things you listed that I don't even have on here. So isn't it amazing in a good way? Uh, let's not be discouraged about our phones. They're amazing tools and devices. So I'm glad we're using them for so many great uses. All right, here's a, some statistics that might be fun just to look at the usage statistics of our smartphones. About 85% of consumers own a smartphone, and I can't even imagine in just a, another year or two how much higher that number is going to get. Think of this one, people check their phones an average of 144 times a day, which comes down to about every 10 minutes. And I sat there going, ooh, is that me? Am I one of those people? And maybe that is you. Again, this isn't to make anyone feel guilty. It's just a matter of like, wake us up here. Is that maybe how much we are using our phones? The average user taps, swipes, or clicks their phones over 2,500 times a day. Wow, when we wonder what we do all day, we're spending a lot of time with our, our phone and our thumbs or fingers clicking away on them. A statistic is out there that people are spending an average of nearly three hours a day on our smartphones. And if you want to know specifically how many hours and minutes it comes to is two hours and 51 minutes on our smartphones a day. Now remember, there can be people that do a lot more than that and certainly people who do less. I thought it was interesting when I found out that it's medically recommended to be on our phones less than two hours a day. 
So the average of us are spending even almost an hour more than what is medically recommended. Another statistic was that 84% of working adults use their personal phones during work hours. Now again, maybe we're not using them for bad things. Again, there could be calculators on there and we're doing work emails maybe through them. Um, does, depends on what other devices we have when we're at work. But wondering also if you might be a leader or manager or boss of a group of people as, hmm, what are people doing on their cell phones while they're at work? Um, not to accuse them of doing the wrong thing, but just wondering, hmm, that's, that's a pretty high percentage of people using their personal phones during work hours. If you are curious as to how much time you spend on your smartphone, at least on the phone that I have, I'm able to go into my settings and then there's a, an area where I can click on screen time and it shows me for the week, Monday through, through the week, each day of how much time I'm spending on my phone. And mine even drills down further to show me where I'm spending the most of my time, if it's social media, on the news or whatnot. Your phone may be set up a little bit different depending on what type of technology you have, but it's interesting that that already is part of a lot of our phones when we purchase them. So it's already tracking what we're using our phones. So if you're curious, you can even take a look in that area right now, because um, maybe we will be surprised if we are one of those people spending the kind of three hours plus a day. Remember, two is the recommended amount. So I'm gonna ask you again, here's a time for you to participate if you'd like. How dependent do you believe you are with your smartphone or cell phone? How dependent are you? Would you consider yourself more on the lower end of the spectrum, saying you're a minimal user? You might give yourself maybe between a one and a three. If you're an excessive user, you might be more of a eight to 10 and a moderate user is somewhere in between. So I'm gonna give you a, a quick few seconds to just submit any of uh, your numbers. Again, no names are associated with the numbers, but we'll just see maybe where are the numbers falling. Are there a lot of twos? Are there a lot of nines? Maybe we're falling more moderately in the five to seven range. Feel free to submit those and Jean, share what you see. All right. I am seeing a lot of seven, eights and nines, a few tens, yep. um, a, a couple twos, threes and fours, okay. um, um, eight because of GPS. Um, okay. <laughs> um six eight nine um uh, one says 11. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your honesty <laughs> <laughs> yes um someone says uh two i am determined not to be dependent um, oh yeah um six of uh, messaging and texting so it's a, a sure. wide range <laughs> yeah well thank you and again the idea is not to make you feel guilty it's it really is first acknowledging where do we think we are or honestly where are we maybe we're looking at that uh, tracking device on our phone and seeing wow i am using it you know five hours a day or two hours a day i i thought i was an excessive user but i'm i'm only at an hour and a half and maybe someone else thinks i'm not an excessive user and then you look and see oh i do use it four plus hours a day so it's just an acknowledgement where are we because once we can admit where we are that's when we can do something about it and make some of these changes that are going to be more effective and we'll truly see the need why we should implement some of these changes. Um, so thank you for participating in that. All right, here's another way you're gonna be able to participate. I hope you find this fun because it was eye-opening to me when I went through it. So in the book that this um, presentation is being based on, there is what's called a smartphone compulsion test. And this is by, came created by Dr. David Greenfield and to let you know who he is, he's the founder of the Center for Internet and Technology Addiction and psychiatry professor at the University of Connecticut School of Medicine. So he has done his research in this area and he's come up with 15 questions. The purpose behind this is just to figure out what type of relationship we maybe really do have with our cell phone. Because we wanna know, are we addicted to our smartphones or maybe we're not? And that word addiction kind of, uh, gets us a little alarmed and none of us probably want to be addicted to it yet i appreciate that some of you actually admitted yeah i'm really high on on the rating scale i just did we know that so um addictions can be changed and so just be encouraged as we go through on the next three slides there will be 15 questions and i've broken them down so there's five questions per each of the three slides 
you may not have paper handy, but we've got our fingers and toes, so we can just keep track only of the yes answers. Each question only is gonna be a yes or no answer, and you just need to keep track of your yeses. If you pass 10 with your 10 fingers, just know that you've gone far enough, that's fine. So keep track of your yes answers on your fingers or on a piece of paper. I'll probably give you, um, let's say roughly about 30 seconds per slide. So I don't want you to feel totally rushed, but just read through them. Don't analyze them and think about them too hard. Go with your gut, okay? And then I'll move on to the next two slides after. Um, you don't have to share your results. Again, at the end of that third slide, I'm gonna just ask, how many yes answers did you come up with? So feel free to say, I was a seven, I had three, whatever it might be. Um, so I think that is all I need to share with that. And we'll begin with the first five questions. Here we go. Keep track of your yes answers. Go ahead. Five more seconds on this slide. Okay, that was the first five questions. So keep track how many yeses and we're gonna move on to the next slide. Again, five questions on this next slide and go. Five more seconds on this slide. All right, stop. Add the, the yes answers to your previous questions. And here are the last five questions. Go ahead. Five more seconds. All right, stop. So tally up all your yes answers. And when you're ready, send a quick note to Jean if you'd like to participate. And how many yeses did you have out of the 15 questions? And Jean, when you start getting them, go ahead and share. Uh, these, this is an awesome group. Um, Good. So we have, um, let's see, uh, 15, five, eight, 5, 13, 10, 11, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 6, 13, 11, 13, 7, 1, um, 1, where was I? Uh, I lost my place. Um, 9, 8, 11, 14, 5, 8, 9, 10, 8, 11, 2, uh, several 11s, lots mm -hmm. of 11s. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see, 5, 6, 5, 11, I think almost, and uh, let's see, the last ones are 13, 7, 9, 4, 8, 9, uh, and I'll just tell you mine was 9, I can't okay. type mine in. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's so great when, when the audience participates. It's so fun to just be able to share together, and yes, we're, we're all in similar boats, but nice to see how we, um, we maybe are heavy in the higher numbers, and yet we have a variety of some, some with less, so now I'm going to give you a chance to see how does how does Dr. Uh, Greenfield actually interpret help us interpret our results? So look at this. Based on your yes answers, if you had one to two yeses, it says your behavior is normal, but it doesn't mean that you should live on your smartphone. Like just still be cautious. If you answered three to four with a yes, your behavior is already leaning toward problematic or compulsive use. I mean that's only at a three or four. I was shocked by by that. If you're five plus it's likely that we may have a problem or, or be considered compulsive smartphone users. And so it doesn't mean that we necessarily need help, but we may just need to 
um, have this awareness so we make some adjustments. So five plus, the majority of us did fall in that category. So um, again, just creating awareness where we're at so we can keep moving forward. Here's some definitions that I wanted to share with you. When we think of the word addiction, you can see what the, what the definition is, is continuing to seek out something despite negative consequences. So maybe some of us are starting to fall into an addiction that we didn't even know with our smartphones. And there could be some negative consequences that we're not even aware of. And maybe it's just spending less time with people because we're on our device too much. So we can fix that, okay? Nomophobia the fear of not having our phones nearby. And I think a lot of us with a smartphone have that panic. I know actually this morning I was charging my phone and I left the house to go to uh, a commitment that I had. And I realized as soon as I drove about a mile away, oh, I don't have my phone, it's still charging. And that rarely ever happens, but almost that panic said it of like, I can't be gone without my phone. And I'm guessing maybe some of you can relate to that as well. So nomophobia hits many of us. And then fubbing, which is considered phone snubbing, that's when we're starting to ignore the people around us and just paying attention to our mobile device or our smartphone. So basically, we're looking down rather than up, which is considered snubbing the person or people that we are around. So we want to do that less and less if we can. We'll have ways of doing that shortly. Thinking about how consumer addiction is encouraged by those who are developing our apps and creating the smartphones. This what I thought was really interesting is the desires of our smartphones are encouraging our brain chemistry in ways that are known to trigger addictive behaviors. They want us to be addicted to the behavior more than the product itself. Many of these techniques involve a brain chemical, which we might be familiar with called dopamine. And so dopamine is released in our brain when it's associated with certain uh, rewards in a special, especially. Dopamine makes us feel excited and we want to have that same experience again and again. So if your brain is learning that checking your phone usually results in a reward, then it won't take long for our brain to release dopamine anytime it's reminded of our phone. I thought that was really interesting. So there's an individual named Ramsey Brown, and he's the founder of a startup company called Dopamine Labs, which creates brain hacking code for app companies. And he also has a background in neuroscience. He stated in an interview, I believe it was, was 60 Minutes, and his comment was, the goal is to keep people glued to an app by figuring out exactly when the app should do something to make us feel a little extra awesome. Isn't that interesting? So there's a goal that these companies and the people behind all of these apps and devices, that they're figuring out what makes us feel awesome and they're gonna put triggers and, and time things out so they keep us enticed to keep coming back for more. What also is interesting, I thought, is the same individual created an app a while back called Space. And that app was meant to encourage people to spend less time on their phones by creating a 12 second delay before social media apps would open. So here they're trying to get us to use our phones more. And at the same time, he was trying to let there be a little pause for us to really think through uh, if we should use that next app or not that we were interested in. But it was interesting to note that the app store actually rejected this space app because they said that any app that's gonna encourage people to use their phones less was unacceptable to distribute in their app store. Makes sense though, doesn't it? The last point on this screen I had is there's top executives that even limit their own family usage of smartphones and apps. So for example, um, there's some comments about Steve Jobs and Bill Gates. They know what their devices and their systems do. And though there's great purposes behind them, they know that even with their own families, they should put parameters and limitations and boundaries on them. So if they're willing to do that, maybe we should take their advice as well. All right, the impact of our smartphones. There's good and bad to technology, isn't it? And, and to our devices. So we can stay very busy on them, but is our busyness causing us to be more or less effective? 
we can be very connected really to the whole wide world and yet so many people are lonely and we have great freedom on our devices yet sometimes we feel bound or stuck to maybe maybe we're just stuck in a certain app because we are we are just so intrigued by it or we just feel like we we have to stay for example in facebook maybe you don't even want to spend so much time there but you feel like you got to check what's going on so freedom yet we can be bound here's some results of the excessive use remember this is all still part of the wake up we're just trying to acknowledge where we're at with the use of our devices is i'm not going to go through each one you can read it for yourselves um, but it's interesting how number two even impulsivity our devices and and information on them is actually causing us to become less patient as individuals and it's hard for us to learn to wait for things and even to be patient with other people which then, um, when we look at number three and four kind of tied together, when we think of self-esteem issues and questioning our self-image, it really is what happens in number five, causes depression, or number six, anxiety and stress. And when we think of anxiety, I'm gonna ask you a question right now. You don't have to answer uh, through giving your answer online, but I want you to just think to yourself, if I ask you, where is your smartphone at this very moment? Just think to yourself, for some of us, and probably most of us, it's within an arm's reach of you. Most of us would answer yes. Now, since I just mentioned the whereabouts of your smartphone, do you have the urge to look at it and maybe check something on it? And the answer is for most of us, yes. So I wanted to share that with number six is see how it's creating almost an anxiety or stress as somebody even asks you, where's your smartphone? We almost have to just feel for it or look in our purse or our back pocket or on our desk just to know, oh, we feel the comfort when we know that it's there. The last one is even decreased social skills. Uh, when I think of how are we doing at even listening, our short attention spans that we have, it's making it us harder to listen to one another. Having eye contact, looking up, understanding how to interpret body language when people are talking to us, and even learning how to respond quickly and appropriately, maybe because we text and e email so much that, um, or even using social media when we respond, we have time to think through our responses most of the time. Um, but what happens when we're just having a regular conversation and we need to answer uh, appropriately, but promptly? For some of us, that's getting harder and harder because we're so used to having time to evaluate our response before we send it. So all of this was to help us just wake up to maybe where we're at in, in our phone usage, but let's get then to the breakup part. How do we take some breaks and maybe just use our phones a little bit less and have an awareness? The goal is to be using our phone intentionally rather than just having it as a default would be considered actually mindless distraction. Remember again, it's not about absent, abstinence, it's about awareness. All right, the first thing that we could do is create a personal plan or boundaries. Be as specific as possible. If you've ever heard of SMART goals before, make sure your goals are measurable and make sure they're attainable. But um, think of what works for you. What works for somebody else may not be the best plan for you, but do what is, uh, what, what's on your mind. Create your own plan and what are boundaries you need. And we'll talk about some specifics coming up. Start by evaluating your personal use, not so much your work or school use with your phone, but just think when you're on your own, maybe even at home, where are you spending the most of your time with a smartphone? And let's just start there rather than work or school. It's always great when you're coming up with a plan, especially if you're trying to back out of doing something that you has been a habit for you, have an accountability partner, have someone to help you along the journey. And hopefully it's someone that even wants to use their phone less right along with you. And again, number one is saying, create a personal plan. So maybe your friend or family member is gonna have a plan that looks different than yours, but it's so much easier and more encouraging when we have somebody to do this with us and know that we're not alone. Start small. Anytime that we, we start something new is to start small. Let's not bite off more than we can chew. And it's easiest maybe if anyone has done something with losing weight or some type of diet or exercise program, is sometimes we, we put down that we want to lose 
more weight in a shorter amount of time than what's really realistic or possible. So maybe you're just gonna pick one thing where you could implement to use your phone a little bit less or create more of an awareness. Don't bite off more than you can chew. Be sure to allow time for change. If you actually went through this book that I'm basing this presentation off of, of how to break up with your phone, you will see that their breakup is actually 30 days in length. And so give yourself time to let this change set in. Don't, don't just think that, okay, here we are on Thursday and by Monday, you're gonna have this all figured out and use your phone half the amount of time that you do now. Uh, allow time. So 30 days is suggested in the book. You can decide again for you, what is, is the best plan for you? Just to let you know, new habits take an average of two months to form. And actually specifically, it comes down to 66 days is what some of the information will read. So again, the book is actually giving a 30 day suggestion and even two months would be more possibly realistic for, for us as we go through this. And lastly, expect setbacks. There's gonna be days, again, think of diets and exercise. There's days where we either forget to do it or don't wanna do it and we don't do it. And so instead of starting over, just start where you're at, keep going. Um, in the bottom right, I have a picture of a, kind of a track and field and it looks like they're running, but think of hurdlers. If they were running around the track to hurdle, would they go back to the beginning if they missed hurdle number two of six? No, they don't go back to the starting line and start all over. Is when you hit something and you trip, trip up a little bit, you just keep going from where you maybe had that stumble or fall. So um, just to encourage you, again, we got to give ourselves time. And if you have a mistake or a setback, just carry on and know that you can keep plugging ahead and have success. Here's some questions that you could ask yourself. A most important question is, what do you wanna pay attention to? If you are gonna use your smartphone less, what do you want to really see or identify with? And maybe it's your surroundings. You go for a walk and you're not gonna take your smartphone with you. And you're actually gonna just look around at nature uh, as you're going on your walk. Maybe you need to be in more in tune with your feelings or, or your reactions in certain situations. So it's just good not to have your phone with you during certain situations. Maybe you're gonna spend more time with your family and friends to know what's really going on in their lives. For example, maybe if you do have kids or a spouse um, or whoever may be in your home, if they come in and you're on your smartphone, do you look up when you say hello? And I think for a lot of us, the habit is, hey, how, how's your day? And we might say the words, but are we actually acknowledging them as individuals? And again, with that eye contact. And then the last one, maybe just enjoying the present experience that you're in, really thinking about what you're eating. Enjoy that meal. Uh, maybe you went out for dinner and you're spending a lot of money. Enjoy the taste of, of what you're spending your money on. Maybe what you're watching uh, to get the most out of the movie or the show of, of just put your phone down for those types of things. So at the bottom, it says, what do you value most in life? And to really think about what we value, think about where you spend the most of your time, your resources, and your energy. And that's helpful for, for us to really think about what is most important to us. All right, gathering data. And this is where it might be helpful to keep a journal or record it somehow in writing. Uh, think about how many times you pick up your phone in a day and then how much time do you spend on it and where you're spending your time. Again, um, I think I suggested earlier that on your phone, it may have a settings area and then you can go to actually see for the screen time of, of how much you're using it is maybe you wanna start recording that, especially if you're gonna do this for a month or two and see how that's changing from day to day or week to week. And then maybe uh, you're seeing less and less in the area of social media. Maybe it's more time watching the, or reading on the news, whatever it might be, but, but track where you've been, um, see what this journey is for you. And then you can have a start and end uh, of where, you, where your starting point is and what you'd like your end point to be and see how long did it take you to make those changes? And you can see maybe where you had setback days and um, maybe you'll be done with this and have a new habit implemented in, in 30 days rather than 60 days. But it's just fun to, to track the course and see how we're doing along the way. 
there's a suggestion box at the bottom and it says create a physical prompt to make you aware each time you reach for your phone. So that can even create some awareness. For example, maybe you want to put a rubber band or for the gals, maybe a hair tie or something around your phone, just for the sake that when you reach for it, maybe when it's on your desk or in your purse or wherever it would be, is you feel that rubber band or hair tie and it makes you just have an awareness of, hmm, I'm reaching for it again. Do I need to reach for it? And maybe I shouldn't reach for it. So simple things like that can just help create an awareness of why we're doing what we're doing. All right. Assess the present and future. So let's first think about the present. What do you love about your phone? Again, they're great devices and they do so many things. Again, this would be where the journal might be helpful for you is just write down and, and think to yourself, what do you love about it? And it's good to enjoy it. What don't you love about your phone? Maybe there's things you're doing and, and apps that are on there that are, are just in the way. What don't you love about your phone? Maybe something that takes so much time you need to get rid of it. And then what positive or negative changes do you notice in yourself when you spend a lot of time on your phone? Is maybe we get frustrated when we're on Facebook because we're seeing how we're not measuring up in our eyes to what the world is doing or what other friends are doing. And if it makes us that frustrated, maybe it's time for us to make some adjustments. At the same time, think about the future so be thinking ahead in one month or maybe in two months however much time you're going to give yourself to make some changes is what would you like your phone relationship to look like it looks like this now in the present but i would love it if i was doing more of this and less of this or i'd love to be spending this much time on it instead of that much time on it you know what would you like to be doing with your extra time 30 or 60 days from now dream a little bit and then think, what does success look like to you? For all of us, we may define that a little bit different. Is success simply that you spent a little less time each week on your phone? Is success that you got rid of some apps? Is success that you reorganized your phone in a different way? Um, whatever that might be, it's good to uh, define what success would look like in that 30 or 60 days from now. And then think of how might you celebrate when you see that you have made these changes. Um, up for each of you to decide, but just in a small way, how might you celebrate your successes and your new boundaries? Here's some suggested changes. When we think about the breakup, I am only gonna give you six. And in the book, again, it's, there's 30 days where they're giving you different suggestions. So I'm gonna give you six of them that you could start implementing as soon as today, if you would choose. Again, only do the ones that really pertain to you. Don't bite off more than you can chew. So the first one, delete social media apps from your phone. And I'm gonna tell you, in the book, they're pretty firm on delete every social media app from your phone, which sounds pretty drastic, doesn't it? But at the same time, it kind of makes sense. If this is really a time soaker for us, and it's not something we need to do, even though we might want to do it, and it's not bad to do it. But if you just delete all of them, it's gonna make you, you and I really think of how bad do we need the different ones? Why do we miss them? Um, it doesn't mean don't ever use social media apps, but think about using them through a different device. For example, instead of through your smartphone, could you use them at night when you get home on your iPad or could you use your computer or laptop? Think of a different way that forces you to not use your smartphone for something that's just so readily available for you. Then there comes the stress for us if we think of passwords. Okay, if we're deleting several apps, how are we gonna remember passwords if we decide to reinstall these apps on our smartphone later on? And the stress of remembering our, our passwords can be more stressful than even getting rid of the app. So I'm going to just suggest consider using a password manager so you don't have to worry about losing your passwords. It's totally up to you. You can look up specifically how to do it, but there are password manager apps uh, that can store all of your passwords for you and they'll even create harder passwords so the, the codes are harder for people to break. So there may be a great benefit in getting rid of your social media apps or other apps as well as um, investing the time in adding a password manager. Another suggestion would be find some no phone zones for yourself. 
So certain areas, maybe it's in your home even, that you should not have your phone. Make it an off-limits area. For example, at the dinner table, to force yourselves to look up with family and friends is maybe you tell yourself and maybe even all your family members, no smartphones at the table. Maybe it's going to be in the bedroom, which would be a key for a lot of us, is a lot of us might say, well, I just got to check one thing, or I like just doing this as my downtime right before I go to bed. I like looking at my social media, or I like watching a movie or listening to music. But you know what? Our, our bedrooms are really meant for rest, and we're keeping our minds active every time that we are on them. And so if we could make our bedrooms possibly a no phone zone, that might be a great place to start. If we, as I could do is say, but I use my phone as my alarm clock, it would be suggested to spend those couple of dollars and still get an actual physical alarm clock, which can still wake us up and get us off in, in time for the places we need to be. Then also to think, maybe there's specific places where you should not have your phone accessible to you in the car. So it doesn't mean you can't have your phone in the car with you, but maybe you have it in your purse. Maybe you put it in the back seat. Maybe you put it in your briefcase, but a place where it's not within reach of you and you tell yourself, while I'm driving, my phone will be out of view. Um, maybe it's going to be, when we think of times, is maybe you're going to tell yourself, I'm not going to look at my phone for the first hour when I wake up. Because when we're getting up, usually it's take a shower, eat breakfast, get our stuff ready to go out the door. There's probably a half hour, an hour where we don't even need to be looking at our phones before we head out the door. So we might tell ourselves before I, um, I'm not going to get them until I reach for my keys and maybe I'll glance right before I go out the door. Or maybe we'll say, hey, until I'm at work or school um, in the parking lot there, I'm not going to check it until then. Maybe at, at night on the flip side is maybe you tell yourself after nine o'clock, after 9 p.m., I'm not going to look at my phone anymore. There's nothing urgent and somebody else will get a hold of me in a different way if it was an emergency. It's up to you, but maybe think early in the morning, late at night. How can you give yourself a little buffer time to not be using your phone uh, and give yourself a break and truly relax? Think of also in terms of designating those no phone times and locations is where do you charge your phone typically? Where do you charge your smartphone? Again, for a lot of us, it may be in the bedroom. And if you want to make that a no phone zone, then think of maybe another neutral place where everyone in your family or your household, whoever um, is in your, your living area is, where could you all charge your phones that would not be in a bedroom? So maybe it's gonna be a docking station in the kitchen or in the living room whatever works for all of you. Again, you can encourage others to take a break as well. Think of some new activities that you can do with your extra time. I mean, it's just fun to sometimes be creative. We can get so stuck in a rut that we forget to just do new things. And maybe this will be physically, you wanna go for a walk or a nature hike. Maybe someone wants to do yoga or go biking, maybe walk your dog um, without your phone. Uh, maybe you wanna cook something and make a new meal. For some of us mentally, maybe we're gonna read a, a new book or just page through a magazine and actually enjoy what we're reading. Maybe you wanna pick up a new hobby and it could be something like playing an instrument or woodworking. Maybe you wanna go on a mini trip to explore a nearby city or town that won't even be too costly. Even playing a game mentally with, with family or friends. Or it could be even emotionally for a new activity is you're gonna go on a lunch date or have coffee with a friend or family member. What could you do with the extra time when you're not on your smartphone? How about saying no to notifications? Boy, the alerts that come on our phone, they're so great because they draw our attention to look at our phone and they repeatedly show up on most of our home screens and lock screens because they, we, we wanna look at them because they give us something new and unpredictable, like we're excited. We hear the little ding go off and we can't wait to know that someone or something has something on the other side for us. And so we're actually craving these notifications and they are hard to resist. There's statistics that say we're nearly three times more likely to launch an app when we receive a notification three times more likely because we've heard a ding go off and we just gotta go see what it is. 
So just keep in mind that every ding or vibration that we get, it's actually pulling us away from what we're doing in the present. It's really many times distracting us rather than sending us to something that's super pertinent or an emergency for us to deal with. So we can go into our phone notification settings and turn off all notifications. And for some of us, maybe we will do that. And for some, maybe we'll have to put some boundaries and say, well, I still need the notifications for the phone calls and messaging apps and maybe my calendar. Again, it's your personal plan, what works for you. But say no to some or all notifications could be a starting point for us. We could organize apps to see fewer options. Remember, smartphone companies and app developers, they want us to use our phone more and more, not less and less. So that's why there are so many personalized options for us. We could put our apps in folders and then we wouldn't see them so prominently. And in order to do that, the icons become so small that when we swipe over them, we really can't see which app is where, which makes us really rethink, do we even need to go into that area or not? We can prioritize the most important apps on our home screen, but then move all the other ones to a secondary screen. So it's just good to think if we're going to reorganize our apps is, is the app considered a tool or is it considered junk food? And what I mean by that is a, an app tool would be apps that improve our lives without stealing our attention. So I'll give you some examples. Maybe you have maps or photos, password manager, Maybe you've got some type of security system or the weather actually as, as an app. Those are all tools, just short term, helping you with some basic information or security. Those, those would be fine to keep. But then there's junk food apps. And the book is the one that came up with that term, just so you know. Those are apps that might be fun and even useful from time to time, but they grab our attention longer than they should. So for example, a junk food app might be considered our social media the news apps, shopping apps, internet browsers, things like that. So just think which of those would you consider to be tools and which might be junk food apps and how might you need to reorganize your apps so you are not tempted by the ones that might be considered the junk food. The last one is stop bubbing. We mentioned that in a definition. But if we have our phones on the table during a meal, we may get tied in with fubbing. If we're checking our phones in the middle of a conversation, we are fubbing. And when we are texting, maybe when we're at a party or around other people, when we're among other people that matter to us, we got to make a choice to look at them and not be distracted by our phones. So a good rule of thumb is our phone should add to, not subtract from our interactions. So what I mean specifically is, Appropriate use, so we would not be tied in with fubbing, is if we use our phone to show people pictures of a recent vacation we were on. Well, you're getting your phone out among other people, but it's with a purpose of engaging others, and you're all being part of a conversation using your phone. Inappropriate, where fubbing would maybe be a problem, is when we're using our phone to distance us from others around us. So, for example, you're at a party or among other people, or even at work and you're just bored with the conversation, so you pick up your phone and start texting someone. That would, we would then be guilty of fubbing. So hopefully these are some practical examples of how all of us could make some changes and, and use our cell phones less and reorganize things. All right, I'm moving on to the next slide here. Implementing changes. If we implement any of these steps, even one of them, we will go from a breakup to a breakthrough. We should see maybe in our journals an actual change for good, for the positive of making some changes to break up. We're, again, we're just using our phone less or more wisely and we'll actually sense a breakthrough, which can be very encouraging and realize we actually do have some more time to do things that we've really didn't even know that we wanted to do. As we come to an end, we should evaluate our progress. Here's some different questions that we could ask ourselves is, how did we do? What breakup strategies did you implement? Again, it would be helpful if you started with a journal or some way of documenting what you wanted to do, and then we can evaluate 30 or 60 days later, how did we do? 
is what strategies did we choose to implement? And maybe you even can think of some that I haven't even shared or listed today. Number two, what was easy and hard when you did the breakup? You know, is to even think of number three, what surprised you? It's always interesting when we do new things is, you know what, there's things that surprise us. That, you know what, I didn't realize I didn't miss my phone so much. Or I'm surprised that I actually did think of some new activities I could do in my free time. And then rate yourself again on a scale of one to 10. We did it at the beginning of our session is maybe we said we were at an 11 uh, out of 10. Maybe we're at that eight and maybe we're at that two. But what would we say our current dependency is? Again, we're talking after we've done a trial of maybe 30 or 60 days. How dependent are we now compared to when we started? And maybe we'll say, you know, I've made some changes to my device, but I'm still seeing um, that I'm still thinking I'm at a five. Maybe, maybe you need to make some new changes or some, do something different. Um, maybe we liked where we were at a two and you're like, you know, I just want to be aware so I don't do more. Maybe we were that one that said, hey, at a 10, I'm an 11. I'm going to implement several changes, but again, don't bite off more than you can chew. Um, but hopefully we can see a change in how dependent we were to where we are. Are you satisfied with your progress? You know, maybe you went from uh, a nine to a seven and you're like, oh, I really was hoping I'd be at a five. Well, how can you make some other changes to keep that five as your goal and give yourself some more time to change any habits that you have or implement some new changes? What phone breakup steps will you continue to implement? Which ones did you like? Hopefully there's one or two breakup steps that were like, this is working for me. And so I'm gonna keep this where it's at. And then maybe number seven, what breakup steps strategies will you implement, meaning some new ones, and, and search around and ask other people maybe what they've done, and maybe they haven't thought of anything, maybe you're going to be the teacher to new people on encouraging them with some new strategies. Remember that the breakup with our smartphone is not about abandonment. We are not saying get rid of it and do not feel guilty about using it. All this is is about self-awareness. Where am I at? Where do I want to be and what changes might not I need to make to get there? With that, that comes to the conclusion of this presentation. And I'd be very happy if anyone has some comments or questions, we can make it uh, feel free if a question comes up that maybe someone else from the audience wants to even answer. I'm going to let Jean take that part of it for us right now. Thank you, Amy. That was awesome. Um, and it's kind of funny. I was. Uh, texting um, Jamie, who um, isn't able to be here today while we were doing this. And I said, it's kind of funny that I'm listening to a um, webinar on how to break up with my smartphone while I'm texting you at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yes, I thought that was funny. So um, I do have some comments that came in. Um, sure. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, I, uh, Elizabeth says, I have my phone in a sleeve that I have to unzip, which slows oh, her down in getting great. to it. Great. Super yes. idea. Yes. Um, let's, uh, she also says she sets her screen to darken it from 10 until 6, so that reminds me that it's supposed to be time to sleep. Excellent. <laughs> Super great idea. Yes. Um, Jenny says the iPhones have a setting where the phone won't work in the car. She did that for a while, but then turned it off because she found herself wanting to check her phone at stoplights ah. <laughs> with an exclamation point. Um, she did, however, set up a do not disturb from 6.30 to 6.30, so PM oh, to AM. Uh, she said it's one of the best things that she ever did. So people Wonderful. can get through, but um, otherwise calls are blocked. Yes. Um, then there's a question um, from Rebecca about, does the book have recommended strategies for um, how to confront a person you are sitting in a room with? Go, how, let me read this again. Uh, recommended strategies for how to confront a person you are sitting in a room with goes to their phone while conversing with you. I never know if I should pause my conversation while they attend to their, in quotes, vital task or keep talking and give up on their full attention. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. They did not really spend much time about that. Um, but th that brings up and feel free anyone if you've got some comments if you have done this before, but I think it's good to just ask them. Uh, would you like me to wait 
um, or would you, are you good if I just talk with you while you're doing that? It makes them just think through, oh, I'm not really giving you my attention. And some people would be like, yeah, I'm great at multitasking, just talk away. Um, but there's times in a place where it's just good to bring it to their attention. So I would just suggest um, if you have a question or you're in the middle of conversation, hey, would you like me to wait? And you're really inviting them to make the decision then. Good yes. question. Um, and Carla says the test was very revealing, and yeah. I would agree with that. Good. Yes. <laughs> Good. Um, yes. Any other questions? Feel free to put them in the questions panel, and I will pass them along. And to follow up on um, Rebecca's um, comment, I was uh, as you were talking, I thought about perception um, because you mentioned early on. I think that uh, people often use their phones as their uh, like instead of their watch or you know yeah. something like that yeah. and um, so one of the things that I because uh, I did that for a while too I got rid of my watch and I was only using my phone for my clock and when I would yeah. get it out I would say so if I get my phone out what do you think I'm doing yeah and everybody right. would say you're on Facebook <laughs> or you're texting yeah. or whatever and it's like I was actually just looking at the clock so yeah, right. the perception of what people are doing versus what they're actually doing so to be yes. aware of the perception there as well and typically we assume other people are doing what we would do so if we would yeah. be on Facebook we're assuming they're on Facebook if they're if we would check the time we'd assume someone else is checking the time so that's interesting yeah good point. yes um, another question. So when a person approaches the checkout desk talking in their phone, should they be ignored? Mm. You know, we're people. And remember, you've now been through this presentation and the rest of the world has not. <laughs> um, so it's it's just us starting to implement this unless other people have this awareness as well. So we have to take responsibility for ourselves. And I think a good point also is maybe to even share is oh I, it's not that you can't have social media think of being around friends right now is that you're choosing not to have social media apps maybe on your home screen anymore but we can't force other people to do it they may not either be aware and they might not be ready to make that commitment so we just have to make it about us i don't think our job is to ignore people but i think again maybe we can come up with good questions is maybe if they come up to the desk are you ready to check out? It might just make them stop for a minute, like, oh, you're talking to me, you know? And so maybe there's just a creative question besides, hi, how are you doing? Um, to, to get them to look up. So that's where we can be creative individually. That's a good thought. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> there is a learning curve. Um, it, there is. Says. Eventually people <laughs> learn their device and how to be more polite with it. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, <laughs> Leah says, I've noticed that bank drive up windows have put up signs requesting that you put your phone away until the transaction is complete. So. Yes, mm -hmm. right. And again, it's suggestions. We can't force anyone to do th these different things, but even at the bank or wherever we might be, a business can offer a suggestion trying to, they're trying to create awareness and confidentiality and, and uh, make sure everyone's clear thinking when you're transacting money or whatever it might be. They're doing their best to suggest what they would like to have the habit be, but they can't force the driver to do that if they're in the drive through. Same Correct. as us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, any other um, last minute questions? We have just a couple minutes left. Um, so I'll give it just a minute if anyone else has any comments or questions. Um, I will just remind all everyone also that the recording and the slides will be available on the conference website uh, by hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, I think that's the plan. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth <laughs> says, the good news is that we can reteach ourselves to have a longer attention span. This session yeah. about having a successful breakup was just great. So, oh, yeah. Thank you. And you know what, with one last point, since we just have a quick minute is, remember if we're thinking about taking a break from our phones is think of the word stillness and boredom. They're not the same, clearly different. So if we think, I'm not gonna look at my smart smartphone right now, is think of stillness being associated with peace and relaxation. Ah, like you get a break. This is some time just for you to be creative or just relax from, from all the busyness out there. Whereas if we're not using our smartphone, it doesn't mean we're bored. Um, that really boredom really associates with feelings of being trapped and it gets us agitated. So be thinking of just, ah, I get to be still. There's peace and relaxation there. Who doesn't need more of that in their day, right? We might not be able to go to the spa, but maybe the break from our, our smartphone can actually give us some stillness and relaxation that we don't even have to pay for. <laughs> 
Very true. Thank you. And I'm not seeing any other questions, just lots of thank yous um, and great presentations coming in. So um, I will echo, echo that as well. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Amy, for a, a oh, wonderful closing session. It was my pleasure. Thank you for participating, all of you. And Jean, thank you for the opportunity. Oh, you're welcome. Um, as I mentioned, the session recording and the slides will be posted on the conference website by uh, January 24th. And thank you all for joining us for the eighth annual Wild Wisconsin Winter Web Conference. I just want to say a final thank you to all of the library systems in Wisconsin for supporting this conference and to the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction Public Library Development Team with funding support from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So we will see you again in January 2021. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Everyone.